What is the prevailing trend on this daily chart? It's up, right? By virtue of the fact that we are making a series of higher lows and higher highs. Now sharply pointed up, little left trend there, price looking to continue. Our bias should be on the long side of this point. By virtue of the fact that we don't really have much resistance up here, we should probably be looking for a four-hour swing fib. A move fib would be a fib of the entire move. A swing fib is simply the swing, the fib of the last swing. It's not a technical term. It's just a term coined by us at FX Bootcamp. Okay, and the basic rule is if you have not hit resistance or support, you look for a swing fib. If you have, then you look for a move fib. At the moment, yeah, this is a 15 minute on the left, you're making a series of little lower highs and lower lows. You could potentially have a little short on here. However, this buy zone here is going to make you bullish, isn't it? Daily up, four hour up, then you're going to look for a resurrection of the 15 minute trend to trade in alignment with all these things, aren't you? Now we've hit the 6 on 8, this previous swing high. There's a lot of reasons why this should go up. When something's hit resistance, then you look for a move fib. When it is not, then you look for a swing fib. Because you don't need to speculate on it going up. You don't need to guess. Because all we're going to do now is wait for the 15 minute to resurrect itself on the long side. Right, so now you've got a little higher low, higher high. Okay, so this one's getting away from us a little bit, right? We've had a series of higher lows, and I would have liked to have seen sort of something like this happen, but it never. It kind of, so it's leaving the train without us. So what do you do in a case like this? What's the thing to do? Yeah, you sort of step aside and you wait. You wait. The bottom line is this, price will swing up as such. Each one of these is a little swing fib, correct? Swing fib, swing fib, okay? And you're prospectively gonna have another swing fib through here. Well, when that swing fib breaks, you will then look for that to become resistance and you trade down to a move fib of the whole rise. In other words, a fib of the entire rise. Then that will put you then long again. Then you look for a resurrection of trend off of that. So broken swing fib means you're going to a move fib perspectively. If you're right in the 4 hour 5, you'll just look for a 15 minute swing fib. Or if you have no resistance, then you can use a 15 minute swing fib. If you have resistance above there, you go away from a move fib. All right, so in something like this, I would be looking for a move fib of this rise because you are now at the short point of this drop. I'll show you on this 15. Look, you are now at the short point of this drop. So you're now hitting resistance. Where before, I was comfortable looking for a swing fib, but now we've hit resistance, and so now I need to see a move fib, right? Now we've hit the red zone of the drop, so I need to see a move fib of the rise to get me long. Why would I not be looking for shorts? Yeah, because the trend is up. You've got a four-hour up. You've got a daily up. Everything is saying long bomb. So we're looking for a move fib here on the 15-minute. Price is rising a little bit more. We just keep moving. Just keep moving our fib. We have to get creative with it here if it doesn't give us a decent opportunity. All right, there it is. Now, what confirmation does one look for here in this trade? In other words, are you going to look for anything here? No. You can look for a little hesitation. You can wait for a little failed low. But really, this is a go here, bro. There's a couple of ways to manage this in terms of a profit target. One of them is we can just treat it as a swing trade or two. We can do something like this. Fib extension here takes us to about 75.60. We can look a little something like that. In reality, I'd probably just long this, but if it gives us the confirmation, I'll walk you through that. Let me slow it down. No, you see, this one didn't. This one just goes. Stop loss, 10 pips below the lower low. A decent amount. You could lock it in if you're so inclined. No, guys, you cannot wait for a 15-minute change of trend off a 15-minute swing fib slash move fib area. You'll be so late. Now, obviously, we can go break even in this little trade. But now what's happening? What would be the next trade idea? You've got the four hour up coming off the FIB, trying to make a higher high. You've got the daily making higher highs. What would be the next trade idea? Is it a short? No, because you're in a trend now. And actually, this is what the euro is trying to do, guys, on the downside. This is what the pound is trying to do on the downside. Okay, but a pullback to where, though? Would you expect some deep pullback at this point or something fairly conservative? Four hour, five EMA, brilliant. Because there's no reason for it to drop now. It's done everything it needs to. It's picked up buyers, it's made the pullback. So in a 15 minute chart, we're gonna be doing a little something like this. You can even get really aggressive with it and do something like that. You know, it is a little triple top. You know, basically sort of something in here would look good. That would account for the four hour five, right? Okay, so let's see how that goes. If it gives us that opportunity at all. So we just cruised up to the next level. Let's keep moving our little fib. 
I just keep kind of jogging this up. So far, nothing really to work with. All right, there we go. Firms are leading indicators as to where there's going to be buyers and sellers in the market. You can use direction and then anticipate buying in the context of an uptrend and selling in the downtrend. You're 90% of the way there analytically. Today, in the pound, you got this going on. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that. I can also look at this and I'm like, look, you've got the dynamic resistance coming down on price. 35 pushing down on support. You think that's going to be an easy day on the pound? No. I'll use a lot of pivots. Time of day is a big deal for me. Visual support and resistance, psychological levels. But ultimately, price action is my big dictator for my trade I'm trying to put together for the day. Okay, has this hit the four-hour five-year? Minimum period I look for trend. There's a difference between trend and direction. Trend is a daily and a four-hour. You can have an intraday direction on a 15 and an hourly. 15-minute change of trend is absolutely critical when it's happening at resistance, but this is just a change of trend basically in the middle of nowhere. This is insignificant to me. Guys, this is a four-hour, five-year May hit right here because you've got to remember it's dynamic. So if price is going to rise from here, that five is going to be dragged with it. Would you guys wait for any semblance of confirmation on something like this? But typically, no, you would not wait for confirmation on this. How about this one would do the failed low trade? Notice how it made a lower high and then promptly made a higher low directly after that. This then would mean I would buy that right there. And my stop would go 10 pips below the 15-minute lower low. Right, now because it is a 4-hour 5 touch and not a meaningful fib, this would not be a swing trade. This would be a spot trade. So how would we judge the spot trade target? Maybe we did a little 15-minute FIB extension here. 50% predicts a 1382, so this would be our target. In this case, we're going to risk about 30 to get 60. Not great, but it's not heinous. And this is the end of the spot trade. Okay, the spot trade is over, so what do you do with your stop? Take your stop loss and you put it right underneath price. You're effectively exiting the trade, aren't you? And we let it go. Would you guys long this again right here? Because you're not entering really at a pullback. You're just sort of entering at a continuation point. The chances are it's not going to survive. Would you enter this again? Possibly. Pretty aggressive. But I think I would, yes. It hasn't. There's no resistance up here. Now you've got a double bottom little higher low factor going on. I think I'd try and spot trade this again. Profit target. Then you're just looking to basically buy it support within the con or end resistance in the context of the shorter term and then take it up to the longer term support of resistance. Just exercise the market fractals there. If this is your daily, for a daily to make a fib, the four hour has to trade to the downside. So then just trade at resistance on the four hour and then trade it to the daily support, treat it as a spot trade, and then when the four hour resurrects itself back to the upside, then you have everything aligned again. Now you can go swing trading again. Like yesterday, had an update London on the pound, which was the direction for the day. But there's no question that the trend is down. Does that make sense? You know, 30 pips in profit on this. You can go ahead and lock that in. You go about another about another 40 to the target. So there's not much we can do yet. Should be fine, Colin. But in that case, you could lock in, say, 10. All right, because basically the whole thing is a 60 pip trade. You're up 30, looking for 60. You can lock in 10, according to our rules that we established the last time. Now you've got a 15-minute change of trend. And for the first time, we're breaking the 4 hour 5. So now we'd like you to go to the next level. So what's the next level? It's a fib. Now you can look for a scalp short to get into a swing long, yes? Right, so now you could look at something like this on the 15 minute and then trade that down to the swing fib area and then look for a long on the 15 minute confirmation. All right, makes sense? But you've got a break of support, so you can go ahead and do it. Would you go short that or would you want something higher? Well, let's work it out. You've got about 50 pips of risk and you're trying to make 60. So you're going to risk 50 to make 60 kind of trend. That's not ideal. The, these guys are swing trades. They're not spot trades. So they're fine. Yeah, I guess we could be moving our stops here. Sorry, I've just got, to, I've got behind it. But basically, I'd be trailing all of these stops. Really, all of them should be underneath that low right there. I think I need to see something higher here because the risk reward, even though I like the trade, the risk reward doesn't make sense. There we go. Now it does. Okay, now it's good. Now we can short it. Yeah, I mean, you know, if I was up, and obviously FIFO and things hurts us in this, but yes, to really, I certainly wouldn't have the stop where I'm up 600 pips on a trade. I wouldn't have the stop of that one all the way up here. I'd have that one lower. You know, that would be the one to try to survive the most. So, all right, so we can short this. And our profit target is we're going to take this, and we're going to say 50% will give us a 1382. Now, the danger of this trade is, one, it's kind of trend. Two... We don't want to be caught in the short side and then miss the long side. That is a cardinal error. 
That is 10 lashings. All right, so we've got the fib extension at 74.71, and we've got the 50% of the swing rise at 74.80, so there's nice overlap there in terms of the target. I mean, you say that, Lee, but really, in reality, if you're looking at it every day, do you think you'd never try to short that? If you can say no, I commend you because you're massively disciplined. To me, this is a short. I would be jamming this because it is kind of trend. Okay, knocked out, break even. We have now prospectively missed our long. You've got to love it. But we were up almost 60 pips in that one. What do you mean by jam and break even? You're certainly not going to give it a liberal stop when you kind of trend like that. As soon as you've got enough to move it, break even, you just go. You cannot wait for confirmation in these trades. This is the thing, all right? This is why I think a lot of people fail in Forex and trading in general. We'll come right back to this because we need to look for the long here. Exactly. It happens all the time. It's actually a worthwhile lesson. And it's funny I even mentioned it. It happens all the time. If you're looking for a long, if you are looking for a long, just look for a long. Don't worry about going swinging both ways like a broken gate. If you want to be in a buy side, be in the buy. Look for the buy. If you want to be in the short, Look for the short until something changes. For the candle patterns, you do, but for entry, you're certainly not. Here's the problem, guys. If this is the fib, this is the buy side of that fib. If this is, if this thing's going to fail, it's going to do this, isn't it? This is where the more novice trader has a really hard time. They'll put together their trade plan, and they'll be like, right, I want to get long at the 50% fib. It's a psych level, P-S-Y-C-H. It's the central pivot for the day. And it's the four hour five. So they're like, yeah, I want to get long there. Then when price gets there, they wait for price to react off there and they pull the trigger and they're filled in here. So they plan to get long here, but inevitably because they have no trust in their plan whatsoever, they long it right at resistance. This is why when you are new to trading, you hit the long button and you're minus 15 before you know what hits you. And then you hit the short button and you go minus 20 before it hits you. And then even the trades that work out, you're so badly out of position that you panic, you get out of them, and then they work for you anyway. And then you jump in on them, you chase them, and then you worsen out of position, and now you melt down. So if you're going to long, do so at support. If you're going to short, do so at resistance. You're actually mitigating your risk by being slightly more aggressive. That's happened to me for years. But now I realize that I, if I want to be long at an area or if I want to be short at an area, when it gets there... I can look, go to the platform and I load up what lot size I want and I click the mouse. Then I put a stop loss and I bake a cake. All right, so now we've made a little double bottom off the swing fib. We've got a 50-minute change of trend, so now we need to start looking at our buy here, guys. We need to get proactive about trying to buy this up, yes? So let's see if we can get a hold of it. Now, if it's a 15-minute move fib, I like to wait for a little fail low or something like that, just to make sure I'm not the only one buying or selling there. But, yeah, there too. If you are looking to buy at a green zone and you pull the trigger and you're at a red zone, you are wrong. Like this. That is an entry right there. This is your fib zone. It's the 21 EMA. The four hours made a double bottom. Okay, you got a little higher low. That is a buy right there. Who cares? Who cares if it comes down here? What difference does it make? makes no difference at all. Providing it doesn't break that, you just stay in the trade. And then you don't care about any of this pricing. You can do whatever it wants. Four-hour swing fibs, 15-minute move fibs, daily five touches, all of those are like 15-minute higher low deals or lower highs. In other words, three-minute changes of trend. That three-minute thing I wrote up for another mentor re -amount. it's not actually something I use specifically. I like to typically try long at a 50%, but this, so... It's at our level. We're just going to buy it. Stop loss, buy. Right. Profit target. There it is. It's already specified for us. Excellent. Good. Okay, go. See, and this one actually did come down to 50% in retrospect, but not all of us are clairvoyant. One of the big things you're going to look for is, is confluence, right? So the more overlap you have in a certain area, the more of a magnet it becomes for price. And that can often guide you in what level you're going to long the fib. No, but this is what I'm saying, though. If you're watching a four-hour move fib, you don't have to guess which one it's going to respect. You simply watch the 15 minute for confirmation. I'm using the 15 minute as my confirmation chart, and I'm using the four-hour as my direction, you know, my trend slash directional chart. Yeah, I mean, it's just my way of doing things. I'm not sure it's the best, but 
and you can just tell by picking our spots. We don't. It's pretty consistent. I mean, we're not taking too many losses yet. It's meant to be simple. It's and yeah, fundamentals. Uh, I don't ignore them, but I don't care. What I would be doing in a situation like this is right. I would be taking obviously Daisy. Trail that on there. I would be basically trading these four-hour stops. I mean, four-hour lows at this point. You know, something like this. Packing them all in there. And then I would take these trades where you have lots of pips and profit. These ones, now in America, you have to get a little more creative with it because of FIFO, but I'd be trading those up there, right? And, and basically sort of staggering them like that, trailing the four-hour swings. And guys, this is how I trade day in and day out with the exception of a few other little things. Trend is defined by price action, a series of high lows and high highs. Yeah, first in, first out, it's just an America thing. Don't worry about it. Okay, so now we've got a little situation developing here because you're at your 4-hour five, but you made a series of lower highs here. For the first time, really, a lower high daily candle. Is the 15-minute looking short? No, but we'd like to pause here a little bit. Okay, we're going to chill out here. It's showing signs of fatigue, all right? Look at how many swing fibs we've made. We've gone swing fib, swing fib, swing fib, swing fib. We're yet to make a move fib. That would get one a little nervous, or at least it would me. So let's let things develop here a little bit. Okay, so we're coming off our 4 hour 5 double top. Now you have made four lower highs and a 15-minute change of trend. The swing is defined by nothing more than what I visually see as a swing. I don't have a concrete definition for swing, all right, like a lot of other people do. My swings are simply interpreted as what I see, and it needs to be obvious. It needs to be blatant, which means that it needs to be blatant to somebody else too, which is the whole point, right? And in fact, I think we're actually trying to do something like this. Okay, here's your euro on a weekly. All right, and I see it, I see two things happening here. Okay, we've got this little channel here. So next week, I could see us sort of breaking down a little bit, then jogging up for continuation. But basically, we've got this channel here. And then we also have this. If you're interested, my two pips is that the euro is going to do this over the next over through four or autumn, depending where you are in the world. I think that the euro is now going to start a 3,000 pip drop. I think it's going to happen relative to the dollar. Now, obviously, it's not going to go down in a linear fashion, but, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. And if something changes, then we'll deal with it. But at the moment, that's what I see happening. Now you've got three consecutive lower highs. How about prospects of a short? Well, here you are. Here's your lower highs. Look at it on a four hour. Okay, the, when I say lower highs, yes, they're not swing lower highs. These are candle lower highs in this case. There's a lot of failure right there. Honestly, I would see that kind of thing and start to think a little bit bearish. I'd absolutely look at try and line up this trade here okay, and, and do a little something like this. Okay, very quick touch. I don't think I would have taken that. Got to be very careful about these things, trying to, trying to short after they've hit support. That's a bad, bad plan. That will bend you. So it doesn't look like we're going to get into this one, guys. Now you're at the four-hour swing fib here, aren't you? So really, you know, here's a little short, but really we should start looking for what again? Longs. But can we long right here? Is this a good long? You see, I'm very fussy about counter trend. Very fussy. It needs to be perfect to get me to counter trend it. I'm more than happy to take something less quality on the with the trend, but counter it needs to be perfect. You see, I would not long this because of that dynamic resistance now. You've got that four hour five in its face. So I'd need to see price come off that a little bit or break it. I wouldn't be comfortable taking it along where it is. My two cents. Okay, so I need to see it come away from that 4 hour 5 or break it. And then we can go trading. All right, so we've dropped below it now. Now we can start to think about maybe trying to grab a long. I would try and give this the long treatment, I think. Perfect for counter trend is something back to resistance with very little risk, you know, after a break of support or after a break of resistance. So this one's looking like it's a swing early. All right, so he has, he has a 15-minute double bottom break of the high, 15-minute confirmation. So I would long that, I believe. So if the four-hour swing fib breaks, you start to look for a daily swing fib, which is a four-hour move fib. Got to always sort of keep these things in fractal kind of context. All right, guys, so you see the 15-minute confirmation, double bottom, break of the high, pullback, long, stop, go. Would you long that? Four-hour swing fib is a 15-minute move fib, yes. Would you guys buy this? You're coming off a red zone, and you had a 15-minute move fib of this rise at a 50%. Yeah, totally. Nothing wrong with that long. Well, I don't know if I'd go kitchen sink, but I'd certainly buy it. Um, since I've got one already, I'll just stick with what I've got. 
I would not reload this because it would turn the whole thing negative if I took a loss. But if I was not in this trade, I would take this trade. Are you guys kind of starting to get the rhythm of this, though? You know, using your daily, using your four hour in context with each other. Because if this second reload did not work out, you would turn the entire trade negative. That's just bad psychologically. And it's setting up for another long. Yep, there you go. On an intraday basis, would you, lo would you buy that? This strategy has been my thing for the last five years. Yeah, so I back tested a little bit. <laughs> yeah, to me, this would be a buy here. You know, it's been a pleasure, guys.